We're at the aquarium on the campus of Lakeland College where tonight the Muskies take on Concordia of Wisconsin. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach Chris Wright. Chris, it seems like we were just here last week. Yeah, we were and probably tonight you're gonna see a totally different game. Last week it was a real low scoring game in the 40s. This game expect one in the 80s. Last game I believe was 96 to 81. This one's gonna be up and down, a little bit different than a week ago. Now Lakeland comes in with a 10 and four record, six and one in conference, they're all alone in second place. Concordia not doing so well, six and six and three and four. And I was talking to one of the radio guys, Hunick from uh, Sheboygan, from Cedar Grove, played at Sheboygan Christian. He's not starting tonight and he's one of their high scorers. He said they've rarely had the same starting lineup throughout the season. Yeah, sometimes when you mix things up a little bit, maybe that will you know, help them. Yes, uh, Concordia does come in at six and six, and they're in sixth place in the league. It's a big league. Aurora is leading the league. They're seven and zero, and Lakeland, who's uh, run off eight straight, they are just one game behind. Here's another one of those cases. Just like a week ago, we, we said, you know, it's the game you got to win at home, you know, to give yourselves a chance later on. Aurora, they don't play them to the last game of the year, and you only catch them once. So you got to keep going, you know, because you never know. Aurora might not lose. When we did the girls games last week, I know I commented, it seems like, boy, they're passing up some three-point opportunities. I don't think that'll happen tonight. No, I think you're gonna get to see a lot of scoring. Uh, uh, Lakeland's led by Chris Saberlake, the uh, Fond du Lac veteran. He's averaging 18 points a game, and Shane Groovy may be coming off his best game. He had 26 points last Saturday. He's averaging about 13 points a game. He, of course, is a Sheboygan North uh, grad, along with Peter Worth, who also had a nice game on Saturday. He had eight points. And we got a couple of guys with the uh, Sheboygan County ties on Concordia. I already mentioned Hunick. Uh, Tyler Muirdink's another one from Oostburg. Yeah, we haven't. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Muirdinks out there in, in Oostburg, and this is just uh, another one of them. Seems like there's just tons of Muirdinks and Westerbeeks and DePocters and all those kids out there. Well, it definitely didn't run out of lead last week uh, scoring the game. Uh, it might run out of lead this, this game, though. However, you mentioned that it's going to be a high scoring affair. Yeah, Lakeland comes in averaging about 75 points a game. That's a lot, and they're giving up about 69, and uh, I believe Concordia is about 69 points a game. So, you know, this is going to be a completely different game. This is going to be up and down the floor. Uh, I would think it's a pretty nice situation where Lakeland is right now. You know, coming out of the Christmas break, you get a victory. You're uh, running, off, running off those same things, and I'm looking forward to tonight's game. Okay, with that, we're going to step out, and we come back. We'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip for this evening's ball game. United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. Mommy, there still be penguins around when I grow up. I sure hope so. Do more than hope. Since the 1970s, global warming has caused ice in the Antarctic to melt and populations of Adelie penguins have been rapidly declining ever since. There's still time to make a difference before the Adelie penguin vanishes along with its habitat. Go to defenders.org slash global warming to learn more. Why is it you two have so much trouble communicating? I don't like the way he talks to me. All I said was that you had a big osteo fight. <laughs> Well, what about the secrets you kept from me? Oh, so I didn't tell you about my drug allergies. Big that deal. That could have been nasty. How's your shoulder coming, anyway? Fine. I worked up to three pound dumbbells yesterday. Oh. Just three weeks after surgery. That's pretty good. Communication is the best medicine. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons.
Very nice rendition of our national anthem by that young lady. They're just about ready to uh, go through the starting lineups for this evening's basketball game. Concordia is coached by uh, Sean Cassidy and uh, starting will be number four, David Lippinott. He's a 6'3 senior from Clintonville. Number 10, Travis Moulton is a senior guard. He goes 5'9 from Watertown. I see they're going alternating. Starting for uh, Lakeland College is Chris Saberlick. Number three is a six foot senior. And there you see number five, Danny Ehnert. He's a 6'5 senior from Sussex. Went to Heartland Arrowhead High School. Starting for uh, Concordia is number 23, Edward Newton Kemp. He's a freshman, goes 6'2. He's from uh, Milwaukee Vincent. Aaron Regal is a 5'10 senior from Surring. Number 11, he'll be starting for Lakeland. Starting for uh, Concordia, there you see him, number 33, Deshaun Robinson. He's from Oak Creek. And there you see Peter Worth, number 23, he's a junior, goes 6'2", he's from Sheboygan North. And rounding out the starting lineup for uh, Concordia is number 42, Josh Atkinson, he's from Milwaukee Lutheran High School. And there you see the last starter for uh, Lakeland, number 24, Shane Gruby, he's a 6'4", senior, he also went to Sheboygan North and he's coming off a career high 26 point game in uh, Lakeland's last win. Our officials tonight are Paul Sells from Milwaukee, Keith Zerbo from Union Grove, and Gary Williams from Sturdivant. Keith Zerbo will be doing the uh, tossing of the ball when we start action. Lakeland is coached by uh, second year man Kyle Brumet. Assistant coaches are Aaron Aronson and Steve Schwier. Chris brought up a good point that uh, it's important for uh, Lakeland. There you see uh, Coach Brumette. Important for Lakeland to win this ball game to keep pace in the conference or one game back. I was wrong, Concordia 78 points. I looked that up today and they're giving up or scoring 68, 78 points a game and Lakeland 73. This game will be in the 80s, boys. And ladies? Ladies and germs. Lakeland playing a man-to-man -man defense. You know, it looks like a little zone at that. Well, you're right. Long three-pointer is good by Josh Atkins. 
Wow, that was deep. Atkinson, pardon me, stolen away by uh, Moulton. He kicks it out. Another three-point attempt by Concordia. This time it's no good. Worth with the rebound. Regal has it. Regal's second leading score at 13-6 a game. There's your leading score. Saberlick had a pretty good look, but uh, threw up a brick. Jump shot from the wing is no good. Concordia gets the rebound back. Steal by Lakelands. Shane Gruby. Well, there's a minute and 15, and this is what, trip number four already? Yeah, really. Down the floor. Peter Worth playing down underneath. Oh, throwing away. Concordia has it again. Charging foul is going to be called on Deshaun Robinson. That will be his first foul. Robinson, their th third leading score at 10-7 a game. Robinson out of Oak Creek. That was a pretty easy call, Chris. Yep. Regal bringing it up again. So far, Lakeland actually has only had one shot attempt. Saberlick's shot at the basket is no good. Three to nothing, Concordia. Atkinson hit a three-pointer. Looked like a travel not called. Shot was no good by Lippinott. Drive to the hoop by Ainert. Rolls off, no good. And knocked out of bounds. Lakeland will keep it here. Kenny Ainert, uh, Lakeland's leading rebounder at eight points a game and averaging six points. He's a senior. Cordy also playing man-to-man -man defense. I'm sure Concordia is going to know where number three is tonight. For sure. Regal was hammered on the way in. And he's going to shoot two. Going down was uh, Travis Moulton. But the foul goes on uh, Edward Newton Kemp. That's his first, second team foul. And Regal will be shooting a pair. Kemp just a freshman. I would assume he played on the state runner-up last year, Milwaukee Vinson High School, who uh, lost to uh, Oshkosh West. Regal knocks home a pair. That makes it 3-2 to two now. Concordia still on top. Oh, nice block by... Uh, Inert. That's Regal with the ball, as I may have mentioned. He's the second leading scorer on the team at 13 a game. Gruby's averaging 13 a game. Covering up Worth inside. Gruby trying to go hard to the hoop, but he's fouled on the way. Most of our Sheboygan people probably remember Shane Gruby and Peter Worth, but. Uh, Sometimes you say this uh, too many times, but uh, I remember when he was just in school. <laughs> How could it be a senior already? Inert, the short jumper, can't get it to go. And uh, Atkinson comes away with the rebound for Concordia. Lakeland's all for their first four. Atkinson left alone from outside the line and he nails another one. He's the only guy that can find the basket. Regal had the ball tapped out of bounds and they're saying he touched it after it was tapped away from him and it's going to be Concordia's ball with 16-26 remaining in the first half and they have a 6-2 lead. Two new players in the ball game. David Harris, Kendall Andrews. Slow start for the Muskies. 0 for 5 in the first four minutes. 
Not that kid. Atkinson again. Only a two though. Three for three from the floor. Concordia three for the first six. They should only let Atkinson shoot. Peter Worth looking to kick it out. Concordia with a lot of help defense. They're playing very good defense, Chris. You're right. They're not allowing uh, Lakeland much. <coughs> Gruby with a head fake. She had the ball the first shot. Yeah. And uh, Worth is fouled. Here, Worth is only 6'2", but I always liked the way he was so athletic and always played bigger than he was. Foul goes on uh, Atkinson. That's his first. And here's our fourth, and we have our uh, first uh, media media timeout. So with 15:37 remaining in the first half, we're going to take a short break. It's eight to two, Concordia. Global warming. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. Back at Lakeland College, and there you see some of our younger fans. I like that one over on the left with the blue shirt on. It looks like a bear shirt. I'm unfamiliar with such colors. <laughs> nice. I'm looking through green and gold uh, glasses currently. For stat sheet of the night. Oh. 0 for 4 and 3 for 7. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what I got. Unbelievable. Again, you see you get a good shot of Kyle Bromat. And uh, Lakeland's had a couple of looks, here, uh, Chris, but they haven't been able to put anything in. But I thought you hit the nail on the head when you said uh, Concordia playing good defense. Very aggressive to start with. Long way to go. There you go. Wide open outside jumper is no good. But getting the rebound back was uh, Andrews. Another shot by Lakeland is no good by uh, Gruby. Drive to the hoop and laying it up and in was uh, Dave Lippinott. There's their leading score. He's 13 points a game, six rebounds. Somebody besides Atkinson decided to make a hoop. Side pass to uh, Harris. He forces one up and no good. And Atkinson with a strong rebound. I think I would have rather have had him uh, pass it out and swing there. Too yeah. much standing around. Of course, not if he would have made it, it would have been a great move. Yeah, really. <laughs> but uh, you're right. Atkinson didn't have his feet right. Good close out by Gruby. Yep. Layup is no good. And then Gruby lost the ball out of bounds. Couldn't get the handle on it. Ainert and uh, Quinn in the ball game. Quinn just a 5'10 freshman out of Chicago. And uh, coming in is Steve Hunick, number three. He's a... Uh, has Sheboygan ties. He's from Cedar Grove, went to uh, Sheboygan Christian High School. Atkinson again had a good look but couldn't get it in. And Gruby with the rebound. Hunick, their uh, second leading scorer at 12 game. He had 26 in the first game against uh, Lakeland College. Andrews spinning, shooting, no good. Not necessarily a good attempt. He was uh, double teamed. And the other number 10, Travis Moulton lays it up and in. Wow. Not the start the Muskies wanted. Andrews can't get it in. And all kinds of uh, Concordia Falcons around the ball for that rebound. 12 to 2. Concordia up. Munich looking. Lakeland's got a couple more at the uh, scorer's table. They're just looking for the right combination to get going here. 
Only two points on free throws for Lakeland College. Atkinson, nice duck under, puts it up and in. What a move by the big fella. He has 10 points so far tonight. Getting tired though. Reverse shot by Harris is no good, but he is fouled. Bad foul, a little reach in there by Moulton. That's the last thing you want to do there. It's a help out situation. Foul goes on Travis Moulton. That's the team's fifth foul. Lakeland's got as many fouls as baskets. It's an 11 point run by uh, Concordia. And it still isn't broken. Bill Suntag, number 21 in the ball game, and Saberlick comes back in. And we have a sub at the bench, ready to come in for uh, Harris should he make this free throw. That breaks the run. It's 14 to three. And we have another timeout. This is a full timeout, Kerry, so with 13-10 remaining in the first half, we'll take a short break. You know, like for a car? Well, what about renewing my driver's license? Don't bring your government questions to just anyone. Go to firstgov.gov, the official source of federal, state, and local government information. And don't everybody chime in at once. I fell into a burning ring of fire. Down in the home blend higher. And around, around, around the ring of fire. Is there a basketball game tonight? <laughs> Great music here at the aquarium. Lakeland trailing, however, 14 to 3. A lot of game left. I'm not concerned currently. Well, we, you know, we had mentioned this during the girls' game that, uh, you know, there wasn't the capability to all of a sudden pile in a bunch of points in a, in a short amount of time. Uh, with the athletic ability of these two ball clubs, you know, you see that being more the case. In the ball game is uh, Jay Freer King, number 32, seeing his first action, and Lakeland looks like they're in a zone. Mm, yep, they're going to try something different. 2 3, change things up a little bit. Number 24 is Andy Becker for Concordia. Jump shot from the wing is good by Lippinot, a three-pointer. He's from Clintonville. There's a block. Could have gotten a travel there on uh, Quinn. The sixth foul on the Falcons. Quinn will go on the line to shoot a pair. And uh, picking up the foul was uh, Becker. That's a six-team foul. Well, they got 0 for 9 for Lakeland, but I got 0 for 11. Six, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 11. They have 9. Jeez. No baskets yet. Only free throws for the Muskies. Oh, Quinn got the roll. 17 to 5. 12 40 remaining in the first half. Lakeland could be shooting a lot of free throws this half. Got that right with 12 minutes left already in the bonus. They gotta find him. Lippinot, another three pointer. Four for five from three point line, four for six for three point line for those Concordia Falcons. Bad miss. Rebound by Lippinot again and Concordia on the push. Why not? Hunick. Can't get the shot to drop. Lakeland with the rebound. Danny Enert. Quinn surveying the situation. Tell you. Saberlick on a pick and got the shot off nicely, but couldn't get it in. Enert, pump fake, pump fake, puts it up and in. First basket by Lakeland at the 11.35 mark. Oh, 
Jump shot is up and in by Moulton. You know, they're a little bit ahead of pace. You know, I figured in the 80s here, 78 points a game, but uh, tell you what, Lakeland just can't get anything going. I wish they'd get up the floor a little faster. Quinn, shuffle the feet, couldn't get the shot, and we got a break. Lippinott on the bust out. Got it in, and he's fouled by Saberlick. Everybody's putting their two cents worth in for uh, Lakeland trying to shoot and put it in there, but uh, the results are limited. Lippinott has 10 points in the ball game, Chris, with a chance to uh, make it 11 and a 25 to seven lead if he can knock this free throw in. Oh man, we didn't envision this at the beginning of the game. Well, we envisaged a lot of points, but uh, not one team scoring 100 and the other team scoring 28. <laughs> Lippinot is gonna get a well-deserved rest. Lots of time left, lots of time. Let's cut into uh, this deficit to about six by halftime. Regal and Worth back in the ball game along with Gruby. Also in for Lakeland is uh, Anthony Cobb, number 40. You know, I really like the defense that that Concordia is playing. They're really making it difficult for oh, Lakeland. Cobb right around, got the shot up, followed by Hunick, but couldn't get it in. Okay, that's the seventh team fall, Chris. So at 10.39, Concordia is gonna be in the bonus. Cobb will be shooting a pair right now. A good shot of Anthony, he nails a couple of free throws. It's 25 to nine. It's a good thing they're making their free throws, Marty. Yeah, really. They've hit uh, seven out of eight. Let's get this cut down to about uh, six by the break here, boys. Hunick with the had Thor. The, had it knocked away by uh, Saberlick and Cobb is followed by Hunick. Cobb will go to the line to shoot one and one, I believe. Uh, not a good foul, Steve. You know better than that. You're just giving easy opportunities for Lakeland to crawl back into this one. That call was made by uh, Gary Williams. Oops. <laughs> well, he did draw iron, though. Could have taken a glancing an eye blow. Out. <laughs> <laughs> or take an eye out with that shot. Jump shot from outside the line is no good by uh, Robinson. Great block out by Shane Gruby. Third rebound of the night. Worth spinning, shooting, got it, and he's fouled. Worth getting a little offensive. Like I said earlier, he always seems to play bigger than he is. Uses Atkinson. his body very well and he's very strong. That was a good case of it right there against <laughs> the bigger Atkinson. Shoots free throws the same way. <laughs> Atkinson with two fouls, Chris. He's been silent uh, of late. Started off with a couple of threes and a two. Now he throws the ball out of bounds. Turnover number two for uh, Concordia. Actually, Atkinson has 11 so far. And Lippinott also has 11 points. <laughs> 25 to 12, Lakeland trying to fight back. Now their foul will put him in double bonus action. Regal from outside, got it. And here come the fish. 25 to 15, shot is no good. Hunick taps it out, Concordia keeps it. Molden trying to make create. Lippinot back in the ball game now for uh, 
Concordia, Lippinott with the rebound on offense, no good. Atkins with a tip. Cobb trying to get the rebound is fouled. Concordia going hard to the offensive boards, Chris. Yes, they are. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, red hot shooting has gotten cold for Concordia. That's the second fall on uh, David Lippinott. And Concordia now calling a timeout with 8.56 remaining in the half. And uh, I think it's a 30-second timeout, so we better keep it here. But it is 25 to 15. And uh, Lakeland fighting back. Chris, they're on right now a 3-6, 8-point run. Cobb has a chance to knock home a couple of free throws. Yeah. Actually, we'll get two now. 25 to 7 it was. And... Uh, 25 to 15 don't look so bad. No. Now with nine minutes left. Well, there's a reason why one team is 10 and four and the other is uh, six and six. Just one foul on Lakeland. But part of that is uh, Concordia's fault. I mean, they're relying on the outside game, shooting a lot of jump shots. And uh, Lakeland's a little more aggressive around the hoop, and therefore getting foul calls. 25-17, Cobb nails a couple of free throws. Munich has it on the wing, being guarded by Worth. Lippinott trying to uh, dish it in to Robinson, but he's fouled. Cobb committing the foul. Hunick open. Nice release and a jump shot is good. Stops the run, huh? Yep. Three pointer by Hunick, two makes it 28 to 17. Look at Cobb. Cobb on a nice drive. Milwaukee, Washington. Washington, the number one ranked boys basketball team in the state. Looking to get it inside. They do to Lippinot. He's followed by uh, Shane Gruby. Gruby trying to play the tough defense, but I'll tell you, once you get the ball inside that low, it's uh, awfully tough. That's uh, Shane Gruby's first foul. First two-shot foul for them, huh? Yep. It's going to be their second and third free throw of the half. Earlier, uh, Lipnot had a three-point play the old-fashioned way. He earned it. Exactly. And that was the foul I missed. Second one is good. Makes it 29 to 19. Under eight minutes left in the first half. Worth had a bit of an opening, but then uh, got a little out of control, committed the offensive foul. Moulton has it. Atkinson uh, out of the ball game right now with his two fouls. Cordia spreading the floor. Good cut off defense by Worth. And I think they're gonna get Gruby for fighting through a screen. He has second. Two fouls in a minute for Gruby. And that's the fifth team foul on Lakeland. Phil Suntag is going to come in. He's from Altoona. Suntag is a sophomore. Hunick working real hard to get inside position, but they throw the ball deep. Oh, Hunick gets it on the post area. The shot is off the glass, no good. And Concordia gets the offensive rebound. Inside to Robinson. Inside to... Becker and he missed the shot. Oh, 
almost tipped away, but Worth able to get it, and then he throws it away. Moulton on the steal. 29-19. Concordia on top. They've led all the way. Robinson spins and shoots, and he's got it. Tough shot. One for three tonight for Robinson. Well, a good benchmark for Lakeland is uh, get it under tw under 10 points, and uh, they had it, but now they're down 12, and uh, Concordia has the ball again. Weren't they down like seven? Didn't they have it to seven? 28. Down to eight. Seven, 25 to 17. And then uh, Hunick hit the three. Yep. Steve Hunick. And he steps off the floor and get a rest. Good shot of Aaron Regal. Now there's senior from Surin. Surin having another nice year for high school basketball as well. And we're going to get a blocking foul on uh, Tyler Granrath. He played on a state team last year as well, Port Washington. I believe they made it to the finals for Division II. Concordia coming up high to uh, put the pressure on Lakeland. Regal, pump fake, good defense. Taking it hard, he's hammered. <laughs> Newton Kemp saying, you mean I fouled him? <laughs> <laughs> he uh, hammered just him. a tad out of control. <laughs> it's a good. second fall on Newton Kemp. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. What do you mean I followed him? <laughs> Knock him to the floor. That makes it 31 20. Six minutes exactly remaining in the first half. It's been Concordia all the way. They've played a fine half of basketball so far. The Muskies are right there, though. Ten point game again. Moulton has it. Lippinot off a screen, and they're going to get another foul. I believe it's going to be a screening foul on uh, Deshaun Robinson. That's his second foul. The fouls are mountain really for uh, the Falcons. 12 fouls in this half by the Falcons. Saberlick has it. He's being guarded closely by uh, Travis Moulton. Saberlick dishes it off. Ainert got away with a travel. Put another inside shot up and no good. Boy, a couple of point blank shots, Chris, and he couldn't, didn't even come close, really. Nope. And a cold stretch for both teams here in the last minute or so. Lippinot has position inside if they can get him the ball. Cordy being much more patient now. Some of their leading scorers are out of the game, so they're probably looking for scores. Robinson threw one up, and the ball is knocked out of bounds. Lakeland will have it. I think that was Kemp from way out there. Well, we got a yeah. Concordia player down. Coach Cassidy's asking Kemp here, you know, that was a launch. <laughs> Get a little more air under there. Sean Robinson was the player uh, tying his shoe. I don't think he was really hurt. A little trap by Concordia to see if Lakeland can break it. Good choice. Outside to Suntag. Bango! Drive, penetrate, kick. 31-24, only down seven. See if they can keep it going. All this with Chris Saberlick without a basket. Shane Gruby without a basket. Lippinot, good double up defense. Lippinot forced a shot up and he's gonna draw a foul. Foul's gonna be on Suntag. I have Lakeland for just five baskets. 
That's not a lot of baskets. No. They've gotten a lot of free throws. Yes, they are. Three. Four, five. Five baskets I got. Lipnot is two for, pardon me, three for four from the line so far in the first half. Those two free throws make it uh, 20, pardon me, 33 to uh, 24. That's what Coach Cassidy of Concordia is going to say at halftime. Boys, we've given up five baskets, but they've got 24 points. Saberlick doesn't have a basket yet. How can we be only up by nine? Enert on a spin move. And another is, foul. Granrath is going to pick that one up. It'll be his second. Six by half, boys, six by half. 4-0-1 remaining in the first half. It's 33-24. Here's a big guy. Freshman from Orange, California. Lakeland 14 for 16 in the half at the free throw line. It's 33-26. I wonder how somebody finds out about Concordia College from Orange, California. By the way, how do you like the cold weather that's just coming weekend? <laughs> There's another one from Orange, California on there. Yes, there is. Newton Kemp got it in. Regal nice inside pass. to Cobb, who lays it up and in. Nice move and a good pass. I've been uh, very inspired here. Lippinot has it on the wing. He's been a force in there. Forcing one up. Got it in. Take it all back. Be nice to get a third foul on Lippinot before the half, Chris. He's sitting with two guarding Danny Enert. Kick out, Regal wide open, bangle. Second three for him, two for three from the floor. Ding, 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 ding. Six point lead. 36-21, pardon me, 37-31. Battling inside, ball kicked out. Condia, number 50, was the one posting up. Newton Kemp lost it on the way up, and Lakeland loses it out of bounds. Ainert and Cobb fighting for it. Jay Freer King coming in for Cobb. You've been waiting to say that name. He was in once before. A 6-9. Freshman from uh, Moston. Officials talking about something. Setting the re resetting the clock, which they are. No, they're not. I think it might reset this. Oh, Suntag. Mm, bad foul. His second, and that's the seventh team foul. Well, he'll be at the line, lipping out to uh, shoot the one and one. But it took them 17.40 to get to the bonus, and then they missed it. Got 11 players for Lakeland in the game. Ainert with authority. He got it blocked, kicks it out. Saberlick, can he get it? No. And Newton Kemp with a strong rebound. Ainert goes down hard. Hunick. Passes it over to Lippinot. He's got it. Ouch. That one hurts. Six for 12 from the floor is Lippinot. Including three threes. 40-31. Suntag. The answer. Not this time. And a long lead feed to Hunick. He's hammered and can't get the basket in. Falls on Suntag, his third. That was actually a good foul. Kind of hard. 
Hunink will be uh, shooting two. There you see Coach Cassidy. Didn't like that foul. Neither did Steve. This isn't this good sportsmanship league. This is okay. college basketball. They gotta earn it at the stripe. No gimmies. Just a good hard foul. No intent for injury there. Just uh, trying to deny him from making the bucket. And he made a couple of free throws and uh, Concordia surviving the run by Lakeland. It's now 42-31. Still like, him, like to see him get that third foul on Nip Lippinot before the half. Yeah, I'm surprised he wouldn't, uh, Coach Cassidy wouldn't take him out right here. Regal trying to go a little one-on-one. -on -one. Outside jump shot is good by Freer King. Lakeland down nine. One ten remaining. Good inside feed. Shot is up and good by Eric Condia. Very aggressive move. Foul goes on Kendall Andrews, number 10. Condi with a chance to finish off the three-point play. Can't do it. And we got another whistle. Bad, 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 bad fouls by Concordia. Another freshman, Eric Norris from Kettle Moraine. You're not helping the cause. You want to be on the floor, son? Don't be doing that kind of stuff. That's just no time off the clock. You let the team that you've dominated here in the first half back in here. Freer King will be at the line shooting a pair. Boy, they've been hitting them. Yep, that's seven, uh, pardon me, 15 out of 17. You're down on the end of the page there, coach. Yep, we're working back up. Oh, that should have been on Freer King. Yep, they're going to call a jump ball. No, 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 no. You see him? He had position, and Lakeland's going to get it back. Wow, that's, uh, that's a break because that was exactly the same thing that Norris just did on the other end. Not a very intelligent play there. And what do we got? Offensive foul on Cobb. Yeah. Anthony Cobb picks up his second foul. Under a minute, 57.3 remaining. Lakeland down 10, they had it as close as six at 37-31. Oh, Condia had a little bit of an opening. Moulton pulls it back out. Shot clock hasn't been much of an issue this half, Chris. Uh, no. Condia, good job of acting inside by Cobb. Moulton driving to the hoop, no good. And they're gonna get an offensive foul on him? Yes, sir. Wow, I thought the foul could have gone on Lakeland on the shot. Well, shot clock is turned off. There's 21.8 seconds remaining. Lakeland down 10, 44-34. Uh, they're gonna try to play it where they get one shot. The last shot of the half. Regal has it. Hainert has it tipped away. Concordia has it back. Lippinot pulls up from way outside the line. Can't get it to go. Saberlick, no good off the glass. And we're at halftime where Concordia weathered the storm a couple of times and they lead it at halftime 44-34. College. It's 
built my character and given me a sense of accomplishment. Now I'm on a career path and I'm the leader of my team. I put on the uniform and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GOGUARD.COM. How far would you go to protect the planet? I want you to build an ark. Here we go! Okay, that's good. Oh, okay. Ow! Oh, oh. Maybe there's another way. People! The flood is imminent! Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Moving is so much of who we are. It's easy to take it for granted. Multiple sclerosis stops people from moving. We exist to make sure it doesn't. Join the movement, the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, at nationalmssociety.org. We go to any extreme to protect our children here. And here. And here. Well, there's a great way to protect our kids here against diseases like cancer, heart disease, and obesity. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, vegetarian foods. Now you can protect your kids from the inside out. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. We're just concluding halftime. It's 44-34, uh, Concordia on top. Uh, the leading scorers for Concordia, David Lippinott, number four, had 19 points. Chris, he was uh, really outstanding. And Josh Atkinson sat much of the... End of the first half, he had 10. For Lakeland, they were led by Aaron Regal, who had 10 points. Uh, if it wouldn't be for the free throw shooting by Lakeland, they'd be way down. They made 15 out of 18. Concordia was only 6 out of 9. But uh, the other thing that stands out for me is that 16 for 32 shooting by Concordia. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's... You know, it seems like it was thinking, you know, oh, yeah, they really were on fire, but they only shot 50% uh, from the floor. Chris Saberlick, Shane Gruby, two of your three leading scorers for Lakeland, zero points. I think that's a good sign for Lakeland. Things are going to get cooking. The other thing I like about the fact, uh, looking at the Concordia stat sheet, is they have a number of players with two fouls. Foul trouble may uh, come into it later on in the game. Uh, I see nothing but positive things coming up here in the second half for Lakeland. See if they can get back in it early. Atkinson back in the ball game, getting it in on a low post against Aynard. Pushes in. Can't get it. Offensive rebound by Concordia is no good, and they come away with it again. Atkinson shooting and commits the offensive foul. No, they're going to call it on Danny Ehnert. No, they're not. They are calling it on, on, on uh, Atkinson. There you go, right away. Third foul already. I'm telling you, that those fouls are going to mount up against Concordia. And like I said, they only shot 50%. That's not anything blazing. You know, the other thing is I thought they got a lot of offensive rebounds in the first half, and uh, each, each team was credited with six offensive rebounds. Concordia held the offensive, or pardon me, the rebound advantage at 20 to 18, but uh, Saberlick with a basket. Well, I just think those offensive rebounds you talked about all came in a, in a little run there, Marty. That's why it probably appeared a little bit different. But you're right, they... Seemed like Concordia was all over the glass. Moulton looking inside, passes up the shot and the pass. Newton King. He got it <laughs> somewhere. In the family heirlooms. <laughs> right. Shot by Atkinson is no good. Right below the equator. And uh, Peter Worth with the rebound. And tipped away and stolen by Newton Kemp. And he stuffs it in. Forty-six thirty-six. Cordia Falcons on top. Saber like feeling it. Got hammered after the shot. No call. Lippinot pushing hard. And we're gonna get a blocking foul on Lakeland's. 
Aaron Regal. I thought he was there for a while. You know, you may think again, as we said, 44 points for Concordia at the half. They averaged 78 per contest, so they're up there. You know, Lakeland was just that cold shooting. If, if you remember, they didn't score till 11.35 of the first half. Nah. A basket. A basket, okay. But they had all those free throws that they kept in there. I think that was a good point, Marty, without those 15 free throws. Lipping out on a one for two trip. Concordia back up by 11. Concordia still playing the tough defense, Chris. Regal almost had it taken away. Ruby has it in the corner. Inside to Worth. His shot is uh, blocked, but then they call the foul. It was a late whistle. Josh Atkinson. Just fouled out of the game. <laughs> no, I think that's his fourth. He just fouled out of the game. He just and got a, a foul and a technical. technical foul. It picks up two in a row, the second one being the T. I don't understand what the purpose of the technical was for. Unless he said something. Yeah. Okay, Kerry, can we get a replay of what happened after the fall? Well, all he did was walk around. I don't understand what the whole point was of uh, giving him a technical and said he just flat said something. Might have said the magic word or words. Saberlick is uh, shooting the uh, technical fouls. And then uh, Worth will go on the line to shoot a pair. This is... Uh this is uh, a lot. Right now it's 47-38. Uh, Worth will shoot two. This is all part of that same play. Worth gets it to crawl in. I'll tell you, I thought it was a late whistle. I did yes, think it was, it was a foul, but you know they called it late. Yep. Ball is knocked out of bounds by Concordia. Ainert was going after it. It was knocked out of his hands. Lakeland will keep it. 47-39 Concordia on top. Lakeland setting up the play. 17-30 remaining in the ball game. Enert has it taken away by Robinson. Lippinot inside the lane, couldn't get it. Boy, he had a nice look, but couldn't get the shot to go down. That was him, I was going right to the rack, see if he and get a foul. thrown away by Regal, looking for Worth. Molden has it. And Lakeland comes away with the block shot. And they're gonna call a blocking foul on Travis Molden. And we're going to get a technical foul on Saberlick on Sportsmanlike. Very good call, too. He yep. went right over Moulton and was saying something. Yeah, I don't get the... Why would you have to say something? Heck, you should have helped him up. That's what I thought was going to happen. And then... Uh, <laughs> We're such good sports. Yeah. Well, it was a pretty friendly game in the first half. Has gotten very contentious here in the second. Of course, you know what I think? I think they're more mad at the, the officials than they are at each other. Well, I don't know about that, but you can't go right over to a guy and talk to him. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Plus, after you got your block, you had them. You had all the momentum too. You got the ball. You got a block. Their fourth foul. You know, it could have been an offensive foul. It could have been a travel. You get the call with the blocking foul. You should be happy. Gruby on the wing looking for an opening but couldn't find one. Saberlick operating on the baseline looking for an opening. Gruby 
Oh. oh. Bounced in and bounced out. No good. 48-39, Concordia up. Steve Hunick in the ball game for the Falcons. Lippinott being guarded by Danny Ainert. Atkinson will not be in the ball game. Nope, he fouled out. Moulton right through the hands and onto our table. There you see, there we go. Chris with the rest. We're all right, we're all right. Thank you, Chris, I appreciate that. <laughs> I can get out from underneath the table now? <laughs> <laughs> Is it safe? Saberlick had his shot blocked out of bounds and then we're gonna get an offensive foul called on Saberlick. Cobb and Andrews coming in. Cobb, I thought, had an outstanding first half. Two for two from the floor, four free throws. Yeah, hit four for four, four for five from the line. Finished up with eight points. Punic on a pump fake, going hard to the basket. Lean in is good. Boy, every time I think the fish are coming back, Cordia seems to answer. Yeah, they're up by 11 again. It's been very hard. Well, Lakeland got it down to six at 37-31, but uh, Concordia responded. Quinn being shut off. And we get a foul on Lippinott, I believe. That's his third. Seems like we've been waiting forever for that third foul on him. I tell you, those fouls are gonna mount up against them. I used to get a good shot at David Lippinott. Here's a media timeout. Yeah, Marty. with 15.31 remaining, it's 50.39 uh, Concordia. Chris is just back from the bathroom, so now we can start talking again. <laughs> <laughs> I never. It's 50-39, though, not 49-39. And a uh, couple misbehaviors here early. Yeah. Hopefully they can settle down and play some basketball, because right now, I think we talked about it at halftime, there just doesn't seem to be any flow to the game. There's so many fouls. and. Uh, well, what were there, 24 free throws in the first half? Yep. A lot of stoppage. Yep. And it just didn't seem like a lot of floor basketball and there's an easy bucket for Groovy. Good out of bounds play by the Muskies. They'll thank us for that media timeout to set up that little play there for Groovy. Lippinot uh, hasn't set out much Chris in this ball game. He will soon if he gets another foul. Posting inside is a Moulton going guarded by Quinn. Kicks it right back out to Lippinot, whose shot is no good, and Cobb with a strong rebound. Oh, good effort by David Lippinot. Not able to come up with the seal, but he does knock it out of bounds. Peter Worth coming in, and Danny Ainert will take a rest. Ruby tried to get it to Cobb there, but thought the right decision. Andrews with a three. Unexpected source. Whoa, oh. what a shot. Up and in by Andy Becker. Who? <laughs> That's what I say, who? 
There's a bonus basket and chance for a three point play. Peter Worth picks up his second foul. Oh my goodness. Where'd that guy go to school? Tosa. Oh, thought he went to a Christian school. <laughs> Threw up a prayer and had it answered. Oh, there you see a nice the replay of the three pointer there. But again, they got it to six and a back to nine, just like that. Gruby battling. Good tie up by uh, Robinson. Possession arrow points to the Muskies, so they'll take it out. It's 53 44. Quinn has it on top. Lakeland playing small with Andrews and Quinn on the floor. Boy, Andrews really throws that ball around. Good ball movement by him. Look at that. Whew. Quinn, his shot glances off the rim no good. I'll tell you, he travels every time before he shoots. I don't know if you notice that, that little extra hop. Good inside feed to Condia. He rolls off, no good. Again, big no misses. good. Those are big misses, Marty. Lakeland needs to capitalize. Absolutely. Ruby again offensive. Yeah. Yep. You know, for you young people out there, you high school players, you watch Andrews throw the ball around. It's so difficult for defenses to react to a counter, you know, to react to that pass to the opposite wing and things like that. You know, good ball movement will create open shots. You know, Quinn had that open three before. He didn't make it, but boy, it's all set up by Andrews. Third foul on Gruby, and he takes a seat on the bench. Phil Suntag back in the ball game. Uh, inside feed is, uh, goes out of bounds. Trying to get it to Condi inside. Third turnover for Concordia to match Lakeland here in the second half. Well, another opportunity for the Muskies to uh, capitalize. Yeah, when well, Kanye missed it, two opportunities to get a bucket. Lakeland's got to go. Bad turnover, Regal. Ball is on uh, Quinn trying to prevent the fast break. Oh boy, I'll tell you, Lakeland is not capitalizing on any opportunities that uh, the Falcons present. Got to get Saberlick back in the ball game here. Can't let your leading scorer sit, sit, sit. You know, I was a little frustrated before, but you got to get him back in here. Munich on a good catch. Oh, nice pass Bob. by Moulton, but uh, Cobb played good defense. Outside shot is no good. Condia tips it back out, and Concordia keeps it. Shot was missed by Robinson. Run down by Robinson, but you're right, Condi created that chance. Lakeland really trying to get the D going here. Trying to run a backdoor cut, but well covered up by the Muskies. 10 on the shot clock, Marty. Suntag uh, played good defense on Hunick as he tried to create a shot. Moulton, no oh. good. Condia, and we're gonna get a blocking foul on uh, Jay King. Condi uh, working. Uh, I think you mentioned it uh, in the first half, but I'll mention it again. He's a 6'8 freshman from uh, Orange Lutheran out of Orange, California. Wow. Both bonus time with 12 13ers. Jeez. We a lot of free throws tonight. You better believe it. It's been very physical though, Marty. Uh, we will say that. I think he missed one in the first half. I got that one. Uh, it was on Saberlick. That was the one I missed. Peter Worth coming in for uh, Fur King. Rear King goes 6'9", uh, worth 6'2", so they lose seven inches.
Condi, a second free throw is no good. Suntay comes away with the rebound. And oh. Munich's going to pick up the foul. A little too much pushing. Yeah, I mean, just grab, 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 push, push, push. You're going to get that. I mean, that's a sixth foul on uh, Concordia, so Lakeland will be shooting on the next foul. Oh, that looked like a lazy pass, didn't it? Yeah, just didn't get there quick. Worth going hard to the basket. When you look at a lot of the Concordia, they all chop at the ball, which that's why they get a lot of fouls. Got to move their feet. Gonna reach in there, not called. Worth working hard. Shot is no good. And Huning comes away with the rebound. Peter just won a four from the floor tonight. Other than Regal, you know, Lakeland doesn't have a lot of established scorers on the floor. Andy has it in the post, kicks it out. Becker almost lost it. Shot, oh, got away from uh, Regal, and then it's, well, I'll tell you, this is sloppy basketball to say the least. Jeez. Kick it down. Oh, right, a guy standing right in the corner, throwing the ball. Sante got himself open in the corner. And waiting for the ball, and it never came. Coursevere, number 12, picked up the foul. He's the other one from Orange, California. Yeah, right. Well, a couple of big time scores coming on the floor. Gruby for Lakeland, and uh, Lippinot for the Falcons. Well deserved uh, pat on the back by Coach Cassidy to Eric Condi as he comes out of the game. Knocking the ball around, couple big plays there. He earned his minutes. I don't think that'll be the last we see of that guy since uh, Josh Atkinson, the starting center for Concordia, had fouled out. Big free throws. Those free throws make it 54-46. Uh, been doing a nice job of making their free throws. Inside to Hunick. Shot rolls off and he's fouled hard by Aaron Regal. He wanted the three point basket, but you're right. Nice strong post position by Hunick. Basket just wouldn't take it. Timeout, Lakeland. 30. 30 second timeout, so we will keep it here. You know, other than the fact that Lakeland has not capitalized on some opportunities that uh, Concordia has provided, what else do you think they need to do to, you know, get this game a little closer? Well, I like Saberlick to get him back out on the floor. I mean, you're talking about someone that's, uh, he's just one of six on the floor, two shots in the second half, 18 points a game. And you got to ease your senior. I See Jane Boucher, the athletic director out here. The glasses and the blue shirt. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. you know, for a while, Lakeland didn't have any established scores. They got Gruby back in the game. Uh, coach can't be very happy with Saberlick keeping him sitting on the bench. You wonder how long that's going to have. Take yeah, him, how long he's going to keep him there. Part of it could be the uh, lesson from the technical, but you know, time to let it go. You got to get in here. Game to win tonight. And I'll tell you, as much as Lakeland's making free throws, I don't think that... Uh, Concordia so far is uh, one for two, two for four, three for five, four for seven, five for nine. Still think there's a big run for Lakeland coming up. Another bad foul by Concordia. Jeez. Deshaun Robinson. Well, they're going to put somebody on the line. Peter Worth. Yeah. He needs to make the first to get the second. Well, Peter was one for two on a trip earlier in the half.
wonder from middle school on how many free throws Peter Worth has shot. Whew. Pull Linty. Thousands of thousands. Knocks home a couple. It's 55 48. Rolling down to 10 uh, 25. Hunick wide open. Got it. Just a screen and roll out, and then you throw it to him. Very nice basic play, very efficient, and a three-point execution by Hunick. 58-48. Here's another one that's got to get on track, Groovy. I have him for one basket tonight. Yeah, he had that lay-in. He's got one, and Saberlick's got one. Regal says, I can do it, but he can't get it in. Sante comes away with the offensive rebound. Good hustle. Yes, sir, that was a big rebound. Let's see if Lakeland can capitalize on it. Just halfway through the second half. Groovy, going hard to the basket, got it in. Slithered his way through there. Fans getting a little excited, the parents. Section, gotta get the student section up here. Pretty nice crowd here tonight. Very good. Hunink goes hard to the hoop and got it in. Good no call too. That's college basketball. I'll tell you, Robinson is right in Groovy's drill. Good cut down the lane by Peter Worth, but he couldn't get it in. Suntag again comes away with the loose ball. 60 to 50, Lakeland down 10 with nine minutes left in the ball game. Kusavir is guarding Regal. Didn't give him a pass there to shoot. Dump down, Worth, pump fake, puts it up, can't get Ooh. it, but he is fouled. Thought that one was gonna go in here. Here comes Chris Saberlick, the senior from Fond du Lac. He was an outstanding high school player. And has not had an outstanding career out here. As a senior, Chris, uh, you're right, he has, an out, has had an outstanding career. Ooh. Says he has ambition to be a college coach. You know, I was thinking the same thing about Saberlick. Wonder Worth if he'd be a good coach. A Guess who came away with the loose ball? Did I mention Phil Suntag's name before? Three offensive rebounds in the last about minute and a half. Danny Ainert back in the ball game, taking Hunick to the hole. And commits the offensive foul. David Lippinott drawing the charge. What is that, about the fifth offensive foul against... Uh, Lakeland today? I didn't mark those, but uh, you're right. right. There's been a number of them. You know, we've mentioned early on, you said that right at the beginning of the game, they're playing tough defense, and uh, that hasn't stopped. And that's one of the reasons why they have a 10-point lead. Both teams in double bonus from now on. Cordia trying to slow it up a little bit as we get to the eight-minute mark. Shot clock at 15. Molden trying to get it inside to uh, Becker, but threw it away. Worth with the hustle by us. Yeah. And a timeout on the floor with 7.58 remaining. Concordia up 60 to 50. Is it doing what people once believed impossible? Or is amazing something you become? We believe in doing the amazing. In dominating air, space, and cyberspace. Inventing technologies. In doing the unimaginable. But our most amazing accomplishment isn't what we've done. It's who we've become. Global warming is a problem. Problem. It's a problem. I wanted to do something to become more energy efficient. To protect the environment. To protect the future. So I turned to Energy Star for help. Energy Star is helping me be part of the solution. Everyone can join the fight against global warming. 
Go to energystar.gov to learn what you can do. Together. Together. Together, we can all make a difference. There you see Eric Wiesman, Brian yep. Andrews running the floor camera, Kerry Coulter spinning the dials in the truck. Uh, for my partner Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin. Bringing you the ball game. Our next game will be on Saturday when uh, Sheboygan North invades uh, the south side of Sheboygan for the uh, semi-annual north-south game. Still think there's a run let in these muskies here. See, like this is the time to do it. They gotta start shooting better than 33%, which is where they're at right now. 12 for 36. Regal. Pump fake, got it up and in. One of the smallest guys on the court took it down deep in the land of the Giants and scored. Very high percentage shot. Didn't take a lot of time off the clock. We've seen those high percentage shots miss tonight though. <laughs> Lippinot spinning on Worth and then he reaches down and commits the foul. That's a good call. Wow. Lippinot had nowhere to go, and the only chance he had was to call a foul there. And uh, for Peter Worth, that's his third. A, like a bailout call, but uh, I mean, he did draw contact. He got to go straight up. It's when he put his hands down to try and block the the shot that's where the foul was committed you know if he keeps his hands straight up he doesn't get the block but he also doesn't get the foul call Suntag coming out Andrews coming in for Lakeland lots of time left here yet Lippinot knocks home a couple of free throws at 62-52 need a little bit of a run by the Muskies Lippinock could get a foul there. That's not very smart by him. Should be money. Ainert uh, trying to get the shot off is fouled underneath. I think it's going to go against uh, Steve Hunink. Newton Kemp picks up the foul. His third. Ainert will go to the line to shoot a pair. Rattles that one in. Oh boy. And another foul. Missing free throws on one end and falling on the other. We talked about this earlier. Kendall Andrews committing the foul. He had a one for two trip earlier in the half. Saberlick with a few words to Andrews, and Andrews nods his head. That's senior freshman, and uh, both understand what needs to be done. 63-53. Make Andrews a better player in the future. Regal. Hit it. Bango. Look good from here. It certainly did. Six and a half minutes, plenty of time, Marty. Only yep. down seven. You need a stop. This is the end, you're right. Unique getting it inside to Lippinot, and he travels. You're kidding me. That was a good call. I was just going to say, when are they going to call that? Finally called it. Full time out by uh, Concordia with uh, 6.20 remaining at 63.56. You work for the feds, right? Can I find a slightly used hatchback at one of those government auctions? Something roomy but practical. With a sunroof? With a sunroof. You know. USA.gov is your official source for government info. From student loans to government auctions. USA.gov. It's government made easy.
back at uh, the aquarium on Lakeland College. It's 63-56, uh, 620 remaining. Lakeland trailing, they've trailed the entire ball game. And uh, they need a little bit of a run. They've got the ball back. They're right there, Marty. Another three-pointer would look mighty sweet. Andrews, pump fake. Couldn't get the shot off. There's that good, quick pass again. Ainert from outside the line got it in. What'd you ask for? Another three, and that'll do just fine, thank you. Down four, closest they've been since the uh, well, first two minutes of the ball game. Yep. Place will erupt if uh, they get a stop here. Hunink is gonna go one on one with Ainert. And gives it off to Newton Kemp. Lippinot is the guy you gotta be careful of. He's gonna be forcing it. Ball is tipped away, saved. Lippinot shot under pressure, can't get it. Saberlick with the rebound. Good defensive stop by the Muskies. Lippinot, no baskets, second half. Regal open from outside the line, and he's got it. It's oh. only a two. Wow. Regal, three for his last three. It's a two-point game. 63-61, rolling down to five minutes remaining in the ball game. And you said Lakeland still had a chance to win by eight. Well, I didn't understand the timeout by Concordia before. Ainer, oh, he's got the rebound. He's fouled. Lippinot trying to get the ball away. And Ainer close to being called for uh, throwing the elbows, but uh, that's not the case. I understand the point of the timeout by Concordia. They had the lead in the ball. They keep calling timeouts. And, well, they uh, didn't have that. Was They called right. it after that travel. Yeah. And it's just uh, now you don't use a timeout. You let some of the guys you want to get back in the game here, specifically Robinson. And uh, now Lakeland with a chance to tie. With that free throw, Lakeland on a nine-point run. It was 63-53. Now they're only down one with a chance to tie. Well, at the 7.56 mark, it was 60-50. to 50. So they've been outscored, as you said, Marty. 12. 13-3. Uh, 12-3. Darn it. That was a, that's when uh, one of the timeouts was called. The defense underneath by Saberlick on Robinson. Outside shot is no good by Hunink. Nothing but the bottom of the air. Regal has it. Andrews open on the wing. Regal wouldn't give it up when he was open. Worth pushing hard, and he's fouled. Well, Worth has a chance to uh, give Lakeland the lead with a free throw or two. Three for six and a half for uh, Peter at the free throw line. Ooh. Steered that one in. Didn't exactly flow off his hand like you like, but uh, got it in. Going with Grandrath here. I thought they'd bring in Condi. He had such a did a nice job. Kyle Bromet. Couldn't get oh, that one in. Back to all back tied trips, up. or you missed two. He can't be doing that, boys. Well, he hit on one out of two. One out of two trips the last two times. You're right, but uh, they've been better at the line than that. Rolling down four minutes. Worth on Lippinot. Kick out to Moulton. Can't get it in. Ainert got away with a little bit of a push and grabbed the rebound with one hand. Under four minutes remaining in the ball game. Lakeland tied up. That was Aynard's seventh rebound. Aynard is wide open under the basket. Oh, should have fed him that time. Andrews pull up Jay from about eight feet out is no good. I would have given Aynard the ball inside that time. Let the senior do his work. Andrews guarding Kusavir.
Feed down inside, it's tapped away. And, oh my, oh my. I was almost positive that ball was tipped away by a Lakeland player, but they're giving it to the Muskies. What a break. That's a correct call, Marty. It was tipped. I think uh, Peter Worth may have been the one who uh, knocked it away. Yeah. Playing the tough D on Robinson. And Lakeland catches a huge break. Ainert is wide open. Worth going hard to the basket, and he's fouled. What do I have to do to put it in, he said. Yeah, really. You know, we're not used to seeing Peter that offensive. I mean, you know, offensive-minded. Now, I remember years ago, when he was just a <laughs> young senior and junior, he'd do this stuff. In high school. Yes. Ugh. Three minutes exactly left in the ball game. And Lakeland can't get the lead, but Ainert comes away with the rebound. Come on, boys, capitalize. Ainert. Rebound number eight matches his average for the season. Nothing bigger than an offensive rebound. I tell you, Saberlick has hardly touched the ball. Ainert got away with a walk. Regal looked like he had an opening, but he was way out on the floor. Still 10 seconds left. Shot blocked, but it goes right to Danny Ainert, and he puts it in. For the first time tonight. 65-63. The Muskies lead. And timeout, Concordia. It's a full timeout with 2.17 remaining. Lakeland has finally got the lead at 65-63. Today, people seem to care a lot more about how good they look than how well they see. And that's a big mistake, because an eye doctor can see things you can't, like the first signs of glaucoma, diabetes, and high blood pressure. For men and women over 40, it might be wise to look into your eyes. Visit CheckYearly.com, a message from the Vision Council of America and AARP. Back at Lakeland College where the Muskies have finally gotten the lead, but it's uh, tenuous at best. It's 65-63 with 2.17 remaining. Lakeland in the midst of a 12-0 run. It was 53, pardon me, 63-53. They were down. They are now up 65-63. Well, we talked about the cold shooting of Lakeland College. You want to talk about cold Concordia, 26% here in the second half. Oof. 50% in the first, half that here basically in the second. Jump shot off the glass is in by Granraff. The freshman, Man. that was a tough shot. I thought that was a shot that you wanted them to shoot. Kid made it. That breaks the run. Saberlick, your time, your time. How about follow him? He would be a good guy to follow, or Regal would be another good one. Saberlick's the all-time free throw percentage guy here at Lakeland. Regal got it, no! The man underneath the basket had a foul on Concordia. The man outside called the charge. Oh, shoot. Third personal on Aaron Regal, we're all tied at 65. Debbie's in the house. 133, 132, 131. We're all tied up. Hunink has the ball. Robinson. Andrew's playing uh, Hunink. That's a mismatch. Grandrath had gonna... it tipped away. Lakeland 
Chris Saberlick comes away with it. 110. 65 all. Saberlick open in the corner. They just don't look for him out there. And full time out by Lakeland. 55.3 seconds remaining. 18 seconds left on the shot clock. Lakeland calls a full time out. We're all tied up at 65. College, where uh, we've had a very exciting ball game. Well, Lakeland down the entire time. Finally tied it on a Danny Inert putback of a block shot to tie it at 65, and that's where we stand right now. And that was with just over two minutes left. Well, I like going to Danny Inert here, or I'll tell you what, Aaron Regal's been just solid all night. He had a good. 10 points in the first half, nine here in the second. Inert has 11, Regal has 19. Anthony Cobb, we haven't seen him in quite a while, has eight. David Lippinott, number four for Concordia, leads all scorers with 22. Steve Hunink has had a nice ball game off the bench with 14. And uh, Josh Atkinson, who fouled out, off a technical fall as 10, and that's what he finished the first half with. Yeah, and that was at the 17.46 mark here in the second Shane half. Shane Ruby gets it into Regal. Regal leaning in, he's fouled, but no call. Worth rebound. And a timeout by Lakeland again. Regal working inside, but I'll tell you, Robinson right there to make the block. I called a foul, but it was really a good block, Chris. In my exuberance, <laughs> call it a foul on the blue guys. But uh, man, this is turning out to be a pretty exciting game. Well, it hasn't been the cleanest or best played game, but uh, it's going to be exciting down the stretch, that's for sure, Marty. Really? Well, we were thinking, you know, point totals into the 70s, maybe 80s, and right now 80. we're at 65. We're not going to be luck. We'll be hard pressed to get to 70. Well, if you want to make my uh, prediction right, go to overtime. <laughs> yeah, really. Might have to go to two overtimes for that. Well, the cold, shoot, cold shooting is what's really... Uh, well, what was it? 44 to 34 at halftime. So Concordia has only scored 21 points in the second half. Lakeland 31. On that miss there by uh, Regal. Drops it down to uh, under 40% shooting for Lakeland. Cordy at 42%. That's according to Lakeland statistical people. Lakeland has hit on 25 of 36 free throws. Concordia has only shot in 22, but they've made 14. That's not very good. And well, Lakeland has struggled down the stretch here from the line. Yeah, Peter Worth missed some that he would like to have back. Regal has it, shot clock down to seven. Regal from outside the line, can't get it. Worth with the rebound! Second oh man! Straight. Second straight. 32 seconds remaining, shot clock at 26. All tied at, 20, at 65. Regal has it out on top. They must have a play for this situation. About a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Actually, it's 14.9 uh, seconds remaining in the ball game. Shot clock is at 10, so just under five seconds. And uh, I don't like that timeout. I don't either. Because now got, you got to get the ball in. Got to go back, and you, most likely you're going to end up going into the back court. And then you, you got to rush to go forward, uh, unless you can get something maybe in the corner over here uh, to your right. Thank you, good day, Paul Harvey. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. 
I kind of like Bobby Knight's philosophy on that. You know, just exactly what you're talking about. Let them go up and play. I mean, that's you know what you coach them to do. Play well, basketball. I've I've said it before. Um, you know, I just think. You know, as a basketball coach, you should have a play that's just called, like, game winner or money or something that you have one play that you're set with all the practices in, in for this situation. There it is in the backcourt. Regal brings it up. Trying to get Saberlick, but Regal's going to do it himself. Five. And it's... Shot is off. No good. Hunick with the rebound. Four. Three. Inside feed. No good. Lakeland gets the rebound. Shane Gruby, and we're going to go to overtime. Course of air missed a flat out. Bunny, what a nice play by David Lippinott. Boy, he pulled it up. Everybody ran at him, and he fired it inside, and uh, Course of air did not get the shot in. Course of air with his first shot attempt of the night. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Overtime. I love that pass. That was a very nice play by... Uh, David Lippinott. And uh... there is help. We are federal student aid, part of the U.S. Department of Education. Each year we award $80 billion to all eligible students and families. Learn more at federalstudentaid.ed.gov. Don't get left behind. The most costly education is the one not begun. Federal student aid. Start here. Go further. These days, kids are logged on or plugged in almost 24-7. Parents need to start early to help kids make good technology choices. But where do you start? Visit tunedinfamily.com. Get the tools you need to make sure they're plugged in to the values that are important to your family. Hey Kyle. What are you doing? We need to talk about your choice of games. Tunedinfamily.com. Helpful tools you can use for the good of your family. And we're starting overtime. And like the game, like the game started in the same fashion. Concordia controlling the tap. And they came up and hit on a three-pointer and led for almost the entire ball game until late in the second half. Lakeland tied it on an Ainert basket. I'll tell you, with 7.56 left, Cordy had 60 points. Now they only have 65. Lippinot uh, missed a shot, and Danny Ainert with the rebound. He's going coast to coast, but kicks it out to Ainert. Ruby, and then he kicks it out to Regal, and now Lakeland pulls it out. Lippinot still without a basket here in the second half, just four attempts. But what a job. There he is. Oh. In and out, no good. Ainert with a rebound. They got the shot they wanted, Chris. Boy, Saberlick had a great look. Just wishing it in. Ah, threw it away. Good defense by Saberlick to cut off Moulton. Robinson posting inside on Gruby. Hunink can't get the shot in. And Worth had it tipped away by Moulton. His shot is in. Inside to Worth, shot is up and in, count it. Tied at 67 with 3.34 remaining. And uh, Chris Saberlick coming out of the ball game. I don't know what that's all about. We'd like to keep that guy in there. Yeah, especially, you know, especially because it's a close game and because he's such a good free throw shooter. You're a double bonus. Quinn and Andrews in the ball game, so Regal Regal and uh, Saberlick both out. He still has nothing. And the ball. Inert pushed Hunink. No call. Hunink lost the ball out of bounds. And Molden tell him, just give him the ball and go down the court. We'll play defense. Hunink very uh, demonstrative after that uh, Concordia turnover. And Granrath coming in for Hunink. Well, he kind of had some words for uh, Ainert there. and uh, <laughs> For the official, too. Well, I think it was more. And the official was listening. And again, you got to keep your composure a little bit. Yeah, especially in a game like this. Can't have a slip-ups in a tie game in overtime. Inside to Ainert. It's 
Squares up on Lippinot. Leaning, leaning, shooting, no good. Worth trying to get the rebound, couldn't get it. Ener did, but throws it away. Oh, great effort by Quinn, and Lakeland has it back. Kicked out to Andrews, spinning, shooting. Oh man, in and out, no good, but Worth! Rebound, put back, and he's fouled. I really like that Andrews. Real quick, I love the way he throws the ball around, passes it around. Don't mean to say throw it around because I like the way you pass it. That's what I mean there. Regal back in the ball game. No good, it's 69-67 Lakeland. 240 remaining in the ball game. Granrath, taking Aner to the hole. Good help by Worth, shot is no good. Boy is it physical out there. Yeah, Granrath had a good grab. Lippinot got it back and put it in. First basket in the second half and overtime. I didn't notice which Lakeland player got grabbed by Granrath, but he kept the Lakeland player from getting the ball and Lippinot did get it and scored. Blocking fall on Ainert. I didn't see it, but the official did, and that's all that counts. It's only Ainert's second foul. <laughs> I like that he's trying to demonstrate for the official how he did it. See, so bumping him as he walked down the court. Peter Worth out of the ball game. Saberlick back in. Peter's worked very hard. Well, I like, low here. I like him good on you know, I like him on defense. I wouldn't have taken him out now. Maybe on the offensive end, if he had a chance. Ball's gonna go on Andrews. He had Lippinot underneath, and uh, that was a big mismatch in Concordia's favor, and that's what I was talking about. Both people pushing, 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 pushing. And now Worth is coming back. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, too late. Now no, I wouldn't put him back in, no. not on offense. Yep. You know, both team guys were pushing there, and uh, I think they got Andrews on the old back grab. But another miss. I'll tell you who's earning their money tonight are the three officials. Wishing it to go in, and it oh. doesn't. Grand Rath. Grandrath committing the foul. I thought a Lakeland player may have bumped him, and uh, that's not the case. Well, Lippinot, two missed free throws. Well, Shane Gruby's gonna go to the line to shoot a pair. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that from uh, Lippinot, their high scorer. Okay, you get a great shot of what's happening. 152 remaining, all tied up. See what happens when you don't make your free throws? Really? The guys in white make theirs. Ruby, that was only his fifth point of the night. Let's make it six. Ugh. Boy, oh boy, they've missed a lot. 70 to 69, Lakeland on top. 145 left in the ball game. Hunick has it on top, being guarded by Ainert. Moulton is pushed on the shot, and he'll get a pair. Ball goes on Saberlick, his fourth. That ties it up at 70 with 137 remaining. And that gives them the lead. Steve Hunink coming out, Coursevere coming in. Who could have ended this game. Yeah, he had a wide open shot at the buzzer. Couldn't get it in. Peter Worth has it on top, handoff to Regal. Got all your offensive players out there now for Lakeland. Ruby leaning, has a shot blocked by Robinson. 
and Concordia comes away with it. Great block by Deshaun Robinson. And timeout, Concordia. 105 remaining. A full timeout, Kerry, so let's take a break. Buy ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. Back at uh, the aquarium. <laughs> Moose Wilson Gymnasium, where uh, Concordia grabs the lead back. 71-70 on a couple of free throws by Travis Moulton. But, uh, and they have the ball, which makes it doubly tough. Get sight of uh, Lakeland's. I'll tell you, the guy bringing us the stats is gonna be in great shape by the end of the game with all these timeouts. Lippinott now with 24 points, leading all scores. Regal still with 19. Difference in overtime is one free throw. Each team two for six from the floor. Each team has uh, shot free throws. Difference is one more for Concordia. We got the ball in the lead too. I don't know what was the point of that timeout, but that's why I uh, work at uh, St. Dominic's School, and uh, he's a basketball coach at the college level. Molten shot from outside the line. Oh, you got to get Lippinott that one. With the rebounders, 45 seconds remaining in the ball game. Shot clock at 30, about a 13 second differential. You need a stop here, one stop. They've been pretty cold, so you got to count on your defense here. 71 to 70, Concordia on top. Just don't give up a three. 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Moulton handoff to Lippinott. Going hard to the hoop, pulls up from inside the line, no good. Ruby couldn't get it. There's a scramble on the floor. Hunick has it. And then we get a timeout by Concordia. Oh boy. You know what I don't like is, you know, mention it before, you know, the other game we had was who had possession? Yeah, really. I mean, they're both scrambling for it. How can you call? And the, the official is right on top of the play here. He but doesn't the, uh, call a timeout. The guy that's way over on the side does. Well, now you might as well follow him right away. You have no choice, Marty. You have no choice. You have no choice but to follow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, how would you overrule Wrong. something like that? Here we go again. Here's Colt. Oh. Now Lakeland has two timeouts. They're going to use one here. You you might need one <laughs> or two. Oh, we. I mean, what happens if you get the you know they miss and there's a something you you guys want to call timeout and then when you get down to half court. There you see the what's going on. There's 8.6 seconds remaining in the ball game. Concordia is up one and they have possession of the ball underneath the basket. But I think you bring up a real good point. You know, that official on the outside is calling a timeout. He can't really see if there's possession or not. Now what if this underneath official goes over and says he didn't have the ball? Yeah. Now what are you gonna do? You've yep. called a timeout? Yeah. That was illegal. Yeah. Did that go to a jump ball situation? The arrow points? Jeez. There's one. I'm oh. just shrugging my shoulders. I'm sure <laughs> everybody yeah, can see that. They can't hear your shrug. I mean, what would you do in something like that? I mean, I, you know, Ask Danny Aynard was right there. Groovy, you, you even said it, not Groovy, excuse me, Worth. I thought had, excuse me, Groovy did have the ball. There, I changed it three times. I got it right, though. Groovy, I thought, had the ball, but... You know, I don't know why you call a timeout here because the first thing you're going to want to do here is foul. So, you need a timeout to tell people what to, to, who to foul? 
Now I don't think I'd do this either. I would put a, uh, I'd bounce it right off his back. Bounce it off Regal's back. Well, and they get the ball. Good skip pass. Too much time going off. 4.2 seconds remaining. That's over half the time. You know who made a good play was Lippinott. When he yep. threw the ball, he caught it. He didn't even come down. He just threw it right off to the side where people were wide open. Foul goes on Ainert. See, I think Lakeland now is down to one timeout. Now what you could do is, you know, you get a rebound, you call timeout, then you set up a play where you get it to half court, you call timeout, but now you have one left, so you have one shot. Yep. That makes it a two-point ball game, and I don't think I'd call a timeout if he makes a second free throw. I'd call it before. <laughs> I want to make sure see how many timeouts he's got left. I'd be curious if he has any. Yeah, well, we're going to take a break. It's a full timeout at 72-70 Concordia with four point. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. <laughs> Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. <laughs> Chris and I are just talking, you know, what if he misses a second free throw? Is our 4.2 <laughs> seconds enough to get it down the court? And I, I think it is. Chris is a little skeptical. I'm worried about I, the blue shirts in the way. <laughs> blue shirts in the way, and then it's, what do you get at the end of that 4.2 seconds? Are you going to get a decent shot? Are you going to get a hope? Hopefully Lakeland has another timeout, and I'm saying all this for nothing because... Uh, I don't know. I, I'd like to, you know, when the, to me, I always like it when the clock is stopped anyways, why are we wasting timeouts? And Lakeland called one right after Concordia did. And what did it get you? But you lost three point something seconds off the clock and uh, burned a timeout. And hopefully they have one more left. Well, Moulton was two for two from the line earlier that gave uh, Concordia a 71-70 lead. And now he's at the line again and he's made the first of two. Yeah, and Concordia's doing the right thing. They're backing off the line here. Play some defense at half court. And they do. Moulton rolls it in. Saberlick has it. Oh, and Robinson on a great steal. And that's not going to count, and we're done. Lakeland drops a home game. To six and six Concordia, 73 to 70. Deshaun Robinson with a great steal at the end. Oh man. Well, as I said, I would sure have liked to have had two timeouts there. And you know, you'd set up one to get it to half court with about three seconds left. You set up a half court play, but instead uh, you end up with that. And uh, bad, bad loss for Lakeland College tonight. Uh, let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll uh, wrap up the ball game. Ice in the Antarctic to melt and populations of Adelie penguins have been rapidly declining ever since. There's still time to make a difference before the Adelie penguin vanishes along with its habitat. Go to defenders.org slash global warming to learn more. Why is it you two have so much trouble communicating? I don't like the way he talks to me. All I said was that you had a big osteo fight. <laughs> well, what about the secrets you kept from me? Oh, so I didn't tell you about my drug allergies. Big that deal. That could have been nasty. How's your shoulder coming anyway? Fine. I worked up to three pound dumbbells yesterday. Oh. Just three weeks after surgery. That's pretty good. Communication is the best medicine. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. College where the Muskies have dropped a home game to uh, Concordia of Mequon 73 to 70 in uh, what was a very interesting ball game Chris uh, Lakeland trailed the entire first half and most of the second half finally got the lead at 65 63 and then Grand Rath made a basket to tie it at 65 with uh, what seemed like about two minutes left I know it wasn't quite that much and nobody scored after that we wound up going in overtime and uh, Concordia won it 
Well, it's just uh, pretty disappointing. A couple of the numbers I'm looking at is free throw percentage, 11 of 21 in the second half in overtime for Lakeland. You know, you, you got the lead, you had chances to put them away, and you didn't. A lot of one of two trips. Um, cold shooting tonight, uh, Chris Saberlick, uh, just one of eight from the floor, and Shane Gruby, two of five. Uh, credit uh, Concordia for really shutting them down there and, uh, you know, stopping the two big guys they had to do. Uh, Danny Ainert got his share, and Aaron Regal had his, his share, but... Uh, they really did a nice job on Chris and Shane tonight. Leading scorers tonight, uh, David Lippinott, number four for Concordia, had 24 points. Following him was uh, Steve Hunick with 14. Josh Atkinson had uh, 10. And uh, the man of the hour was Travis Moulton, who had 11. He hit three out of, pardon me, four out of four free throws down the end. With his team down 70 to 69, he made, uh, had two two for two trips, and that's uh, what won the game for uh, the Falcons. Lakeland was led by uh, Aaron Regal with 19, and then chipping in with 11 each were uh, Chris Saberlick and uh, Peter Worth. And uh, we won't go through all the rest of the scoring, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, for the crew, Brian Andrews behind that camera, Eric Wiesman running the top camera, Kerry Kautzer spinning the dials in the truck, my partner Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you down the road.